Hey guys and welcome to another image walkthrough. This week we are going to run through what it took to create this movie poster here. So I created this movie poster for an independent movie uh, in America. The director got in touch, told me the synopsis of the movie, asked me if uh, he could commission me to create a poster for the upcoming film. So just, I want to say a couple of things about movie poster and movie poster work before we actually get into this walkthrough. Uh, sometimes there's, uh, you'll, there'll be a poster online that comes out from maybe even a big agency and everyone slags it off saying how bad everything is, like maybe the direction of the lights off and um, certain elements don't sit well together. And that's basically, basically because in the higher end kind of movie poster market, uh, ag specific agencies do various aspects of the creation of the poster so one agency might do the photography a separate agency will do the editing uh, and then maybe another agency will get involved somewhere else down the line so what you're getting also as well is you might have you might have separate photographers shooting certain actors at different times so what happens then is everything is lit differently and then when the uh, stills are sent to the agency for the creative artwork to put together he has to then create a poster from this jigsaw of different images shot by different people uh, with different lighting so and there's nothing really he can do about that he just has to make the best of a bad situation sometimes so i, I remember there was a spider-man poster that came out what was was pretty bad and everyone was uh talking bad about the person who put that poster together but the thing is that the guy who put that poster together did not have any choice in how those images were shot. They were probably shot by different people at different times and then he just had to use them to put a poster together with the best of his skills. So, and, and that's just sometimes how the industry works. A lot of the time maybe the higher end up they don't actually care about the art of the poster or the, the thing you're creating. They just want something put together to use for marketing. Uh, so for people like me who uh, work with a lot of independent movie movie people, we also I always try and do the say like best if I do the photography as well as the editing, the image will be more cohesive as a whole, and that always happens. But again, because I have many clients that inter are international, lots of those clients obviously can't afford to pay me to fly me out to shoot stills or get me to shoot the stills over here so again sometimes i have to work with, with what is given to me and sometimes it, it's not a lot so for example this image here the director got in touch he gave me a synopsis of the movie and he had a few stills and a little bit of an idea of how of what he wanted so the stills were similar also quite similar to these here so this one here uh, and this one here. So again, different kind of lighting. This one's kind of uh, looks overcast. This one's shot with the sun behind or in the shade with this kind of daylight coming in from behind. So then I basically had to take these two images and then create a poster around it. And sometimes it can be, it's difficult, but it's not too difficult. What you have to do is kind of create a storyline or a building around the models where I prefer usually with composite to create the background first but again when you shoot when you you're getting the stills of the actors you sometimes have to then build the background around that around the stills you get and for for example for something like this as well usually when uh, certain elements are out of focus it, it, it again makes things harder but there's always ways you can kind of integrate the facts that his arm is out of focus and obviously I think if you zoomed in as well face a little bit of focus so we have to do some sharpening and again use the use our creative instincts uh, to kind of integrate the, the depth of field into the image so this is the final image that I eventually came so as you can see I added foreground elements that are blur to then kind of to get some depth in the image, but that you could also, which also then made sense that his arm was uh, out of focus, because so obviously it's, it's coming into the foreground here where the foreground is out of focus, and then obviously 
where the this guy here was backlit and managed to be able to add some backlighting into the image here. So again, post design, when, when, when you're being commissioned to do something, not everything, not every aspect is under your control. So you have to make the best of that situation. Anyway, we rant over. <laughs> Let's go into the Photoshop files and then I will walk you through the steps or the things that I went through, the techniques to create this image. So started off with a blank layer here. So again, uh, sometimes with uh, these kind of commissions, the, the stills you get, the, it won't cover everything you need for the image. So I had to then go out and source stock images from uh, the internet. Sometimes people, directors will pay for premium stock, sometimes they haven't got a lot of money so they will want you to find free stock attribution free, what they are allowed to use in commercial projects. So um, this image here was actually from Pixabay which is attribution free. Uh, and once I saw the image I quite liked the, the contrast of the waves and the clouds and it's a very dramatic image, I like the fact that it's dark and it has this kind of area here with, with some detail in the clouds it just looks quite cinematic so i thought i'll just start off using that as a background template and i would somehow build the scene up with that and the actors so what i started doing again some of these images some of these pieces here will have been added in later but obviously i had to put them lower down into the layers so we'll just add I'll just kind of talk through that. So this was added later after I added some of the background, but this is a splash. Um, this is a splash. It can either get PNG packs online or you can select, if you have some images of the sea or waves, you can select the white frothy parts of the of the tides out and, um, and the waves and just select it out and then mask it and bring it in as a separate splash. So. I believe this was a PNG pack. So then this is a curves adjustment just attached to that splash there to match the colour of the waves. And as you can see here, what I'm doing here is you'll see these little black things appear which will make sense later. But I had to paint in specific areas uh, here to continue ropes of a ship that I build later as you will see here. So this is also a free stock image. So what I've done is brought in uh, I resized it to how I wanted it and I was still missing these ropes here so what I did was I painted in some ropes quite roughly as you can see but once um, the tonal values of this are manipulated to how I want them then you won't be able to see any difference. So you have, here are all the adjustment layers that I used on this pirate ship once I had it in and selected out again darkening with curves bit of colour correction with curves, again some more colour correction with curves and then again tonal darkening with curves. So here again I was just adding some rope onto this area here and with curves I just pulled it down to match the uh, tonal value. So the next thing is I started, I wanted it to look like the ship was maybe I'd been hit by a, another pirate ship or it was sinking, it was flooding, uh, whichever you want uh, to go with, it's up to you. But uh, So I added some water onto the boat, obviously splashing up here, and some water here. And then just again, with curved adjustments and pure saturation, just creating the colour balance and tonal values that I want. So I also put them into a group, backward ship. So next we I uh, was bringing in, in the characters. So this is the character hands. Obviously completely yellow compared to everything in the background. So with curves and colour balance I started to adjust colours and tonal values and desaturation until I got to somewhere where I wanted them to be. And then I would dodge and burn them as well. I wanted, obviously because the light is here, I wanted this part of his body to still have some of the uh, light from this area here, and then obviously darken this area a little bit. 
and then I would bring in Blackbeard. Again, with curve adjustments, just changing the color on Blackbeard to fit him into the scene a little bit better. As you can see, I played around with the arm and the gun. So I had to just, for some reason I can't remember off the top of my head, why I uh, cut out this arm and brought it. Maybe because I wanted the depth of field to kind of go a little bit further, further back. And then with curve adjustment, I then color matched the arm. So then again, I dodged and burned the Blackbeard Pirate. So again, now I've added splashes in to the other side of the boat. Color correction curves. So this one here is an overall color correction of the overall image. I want it to bring the contrast down. I want it, wanted the image a little bit moody. So I've curved adjustment, as you can see. Just pulled down the uh, RGB curve here and across here. Which darkened the overall image. And then um, desaturation as well, just desaturating. You can look here. Because the images were shot in natural light in specific different kind of uh, situations, there will be different kind of colour shifts. So I was just trying to desaturate that to take some of the colour shifts out. And then now, just adding some foreground splashes in. Uh, I knew that I wanted to have some foreground elements in that were out of focus, so it kind of matched. Uh, it kind of gave the reason, or gave us an excuse, sorry, for Blackbeard's arm to be out of focus, like he's pointing it towards the camera and just off a little bit. But because it's that close, it would be out of focus, come also with the foreground element. That makes sense. So again, added splashes, colour colour match them with curves and then now adding a bigger wave as the ship's sinking I wanted some uh, water coming in big splash or wave of water and then darkening and um, colour matching and desaturation with curves and hue saturation and now adding the ship into the background obviously because the ship's in the distance there would be a lack of contrast like so and again that's for curves adjustment that's the ship in the distance and then I started adding the wheel of the pirate ship in I'm not sure what the technical term is for a pirate ship wheel steering wheel mm, I have no idea anyway so I started bringing that in but I kind of blended the water in between the spokes and around just to blend it more into the situation again the curves and adjustment uh, curve adjustment layers and hue saturation, I would then match the tones and the colours. As you can see, it looks like the wind is in the water here, and then coming out here. And then again, just darkening it up a little bit. So then I started styling the image, so this is kind of flares and dodge and burn of colour. So I did a, a light flare here, so it looked, kind of looked like a sunset maybe. So the sun's going down, but there's still that glow in the sky, the nice glow. And then again, I added some more on the screen, just painting the color, sampling the color here and painting it, painting it in over this area on screen blend mode. And then added some light flares in, a little bit of distort, light distortion from where the flare would be. Again, these are just overlays that you put the screen blend mode, so the image is black and the light part will be somewhere in the center, you put it on screen mode, it delete, it kind of get, uh, makes anything that's less than 50% 50, 50 grey or sorry, darker than 50% grey disappear and you're only left with the light areas and then I started adding the colour obviously all these different elements are from all different images and they'll be different colour shifts so you want to create a uniform colour grade by uh, just adding gradient maps and selective colour things like that and just blend it just blends in images seamlessly together so the gradient map and then selective colour just adding some kind of blue or purple colour into the shadows then another gradient map so I wasn't keen on the overall colour it was a little bit too purple uh, magenta -y. so I wanted a little bit more because we're at sea and it's a pirate movie with kind of a blue turquoise colour 
into the overall final color grade and then I added some red in to the shadows. And then I uh, desaturated the image a little bit and added some more clarity to it with a Nick Color Effects Bleach Bypass which is quite good for gritty, gritty images. And then again just added a little more uh, light over here with just painting it on the screen blend mode and then some sharpening with a high pass filter and then again messing with the overall darkness and light of the image making it a little bit moodier just darkening around the edges as well to focus the eye into the center and playing with levels as I felt it was a little bit too dark so again I just wanted to bring a little bit a little bit of detail actually into the darkness areas but still we've got the kind of the dark around here and the eye is focusing here and then eventually the uh, adding the text and the fonts in which did start off red but then we came to the conclusion that uh, this colour was better it just went it just sat um, a little bit more nicely with the the concept of the pirates the red was too bold and kind of distracting so we kind of went with a brown which is more classic so that's a quick walkthrough uh, and just a quick explanation of the various layers I hope just kind of working through these things together and me speaking about it kind of shows you what how much kind of work and uh, manipulation goes into one of these images uh, as you'll see in all my images I use curves a lot so I, please if you don't know how to use curves just start playing on with curves it's very powerful and I use them in most images and again when you see a movie poster and things don't align properly it's not it's probably not the fault of the person who composited it together it, it's, it, that poster will have been through so many different hands it's hard to just have a a good stamp on it so thank you and I will speak to you next week peace